Celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another interview on Overcomers TV Live. I'm Pastor Chuck. I have the honor and privilege to introduce to you some of our ministry partners and friends. And our next guest is Jeremy Frith, Barnabas A. Jeremy, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you, Chuck. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, uh, we've talked quite a few times over the years. Love what you guys do. Uh, Overcomers TV is all about um, he who uh, is born of God overcomes. This is the victory that we have over the world is our faith. So we all have a faith journey. I'd love for you to share a little bit about yours with our viewers and how Jesus became real to you and eventually led to a life of ministry. Yeah, thank you. So I was born in Kenya as a missionary kid. My parents were missionaries there. Um, so you could say I was kind of born into to the ministry, if you like. Um, grew up in England, spent most of my life there. You can tell from my accent that uh, I'm not from uh, from the U.S., but uh, met my wife, actually, on the mission field. I went to visit uh, visit my brother in Bolivia and met my wife, who was from Pennsylvania. We, uh, we kind of clicked and started writing to each other, and then I joined her on the mission field back in 1998. So we both served as missionaries with SIM for about 10 years in Bolivia and Paraguay. Uh, we came back to England in 2008. We finished on the mission field and I wanted to do something that had kingdom value and uh, stay involved in a ministry. And through my mom actually found out about Barnabas Aid, which is an aid agency for persecuted Christians. Yeah. Um, and found an opportunity with them in England and uh, was able, privileged to head up our UK office for 10 years. Uh, and then God called us to move over here to the US to head up the US office uh, in 2019. So I've been here ever since and uh, trying to raise awareness of what's going on in the world and what Barnabas Aid is doing to help our brothers and sisters. Yeah, amen. Yeah, a lot of it doesn't hit the mainstream media, especially the persecution, persecution stuff, right? Absolutely. I would say 90 percent of what's going on in the world never makes it into the media. I mean, hopefully um, your viewers have heard about the situation in Turkey and Syria with the earthquake uh, prior to that, Ukraine and prior to that, Afghanistan. But there are so many other examples I could give you in so many countries where persecution occurs on a daily basis. Christians are attacked, arrested, imprisoned for their faith, essentially stuff that we thought wouldn't still exist in the 21st century and yet it's getting worse uh, right. day by day yeah wow definitely a lot to be pray prayerful about and that's why we do the show we try to raise awareness of different ministries that are boots on the ground uh, that may be out of sight out of mind uh, there's a few big ones that everybody's heard about and um you know bottom line is uh the harvest is ripe and laborers are few so i know every ministry has a mission statement or you know a vision statement I always love to ask the question, how do you guys describe the heartbeat of Barnabas Aid? Well, we were founded about 30 years ago as an aid agency for the persecuted church. So that's to help Christians where they're suffering for their faith in whatever context. Um, but that doesn't just involve sending money, sending um, resources to help people. We also involved in evangelism and discipleship, which for me as a former missionary is, uh, is close to my heart. Uh, so we have funds where we support pastors and evangelists. That These are people in their own indigenous contexts who are reaching out to their communities for Christ. We also fund projects that will print scripture, Bibles, uh, New Testaments. Um, most recently in Russian and Ukrainian, you know, that situation in Ukraine, uh, people are crying out for the gospel. It's, it's interesting when when you lose everything and when your life um, is at risk on a daily basis, it's amazing how many people then t turn to Christ and they want to have something that they can hold on to that gives them a hope. So we're working in so many different contexts in so many situations. And uh, a lot of our work is in is to do with discipleship, evangelism and helping converts to continue in their faith. 
Amen. That's good. That's good. And at the end of the day, it really plays into evangelism. We talk about evangelism and discipleship. Um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So the the people that we support, you know, you're in countries where uh, it's predominantly Muslim or predominantly Hindu or Buddhist or whatever it is. Um, when they see Christians helping Christians, this is kind of a, a form of evangelism on its own. When they realize that Christians actually do care about their brothers and sisters, because a, a lot of these um, these national religions, they, they don't actually think that the West cares about the converts to Christianity because they never see it. So when they see an organization like Barnabas coming alongside them, helping them, resourcing them, housing them, whatever it takes, that speaks to, to the local people in so many ways. Um, I just wanted to give you a little story, actually, because it's always good to have a personal story. Um, yeah. So the lady that we helped, her name is Jermaine. She lives in Senegal. And she was a widow with five children. For the first time in 50 years, she's now 50, wow. we were able to get her a copy of the Bible in her own language. Wow. And her comment is, now not only will I read the Word of God, but it will help me with my family worship. And with my Bible, I can teach my children and share my faith with my neighbors. And this is just one lady, but this is an, an example, one of many, where we're helping people to get the scripture in their hands and they can then go out and be the best evangelist possible. And these are countries where Western missionaries are not always welcome. In fact, they can be uh, rejected just because of the, the color of their skin. So to have national uh, pastors, evangelists, people like Jermaine that are reaching out to their community with the gospel, that's just a fantastic thing. Yeah, amen. And that again leads to discipleship, making disciples of all the nations, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded. And it's kind of hard to do that without a copy of the word, right? And to know okay. everything that Jesus taught and the, Absolutely. Lord, the Lord and even the Old Testament, thus saith the Lord, right? And a lot of our projects also are involved with building churches. You know, if you've got a community, if you've got a group of people, um, they need some sort of shelter to meet in and to worship. We also run discipleship training, pastor training. We fund um, conferences where the church leaders of tomorrow can get a solid training and education so that they can become church leaders of the future. And so we have a lot of projects in a lot of different countries that provide that sort of training as well. Yeah. Amen. Well, when we talk about the body of Christ, again, there's lots of parts and lots of people get involved in lots of different ways. How can people learn more about, you know, Barnabas Aid and, and get more involved? Barnabas Aid, I mean, we, we are expanding what we do. You know, the Ukraine war was a, a bit of a game changer. We used to fund projects and we quickly realized with Ukraine that, you know, we can't be just sending money into that region. You don't know where it's going to go. Food was scarce. Food was expensive. So what we, we've expanded to start doing is to send physical containers of food, containers of medical supplies, containers of clothing to Ukraine, and now with the Syria and Turkey earthquakes to Syria. Um, so people can get involved either by funding one of those projects, and you can see a donate link on our homepage. You can see more details of the latest needs. People can donate. People can share in their churches and in their communities and with their family as well. Uh, just share with them. We put out so many prayer resources. Uh, we, what I always say is I, I'm, when I go to a church, I don't say, look, I'm here for your money. I say I'm here to raise awareness and to generate prayer. We feel that prayer is the most important thing. But if people then feel able to make a donation towards our work, then that's fantastic. And in any year, we can be involved in over 60 countries around the world. Um, so what we're doing with Turkey and Syria right now is we're looking to get together containers of food and containers of clothing to send to that region as quickly as possible to help the hundreds of thousands of people who've lost their homes um, and uh, have lost everything. So people can get involved with that. They can speak in their church if they want to contact me and say, how can I start a prayer meeting in, in my local community? We'll resource them with everything they need to do that. Um, and we're just looking for volunteers and partners across America to come alongside us, to help us and to, to raise awareness of what's going on and what we're doing. 
Yeah. Amen. That's good. And, you know, it is a spiritual battle for sure. It's all spiritual, especially the persecution. And uh, it should all start in prayer. But, um, you know, prayer support is first and foremost. And then, that, again, that's when the Holy Spirit puts on our heart what our part is and what our yeah. part isn't sometimes. But, again, raising awareness. Uh, we're all advocates, um, you know, intercessors for the gospel, right? Absolutely. And just just one example of how God has, has really moved and, and worked through us. You know, months ago, one of our partners in Germany um, said, uh, I've got a container of food. Where would you like us to ship it? And my colleagues in the UK said, well, let's, we need to send it to Syria. We feel that Syria would be a good fit. So this was sent a couple of months ago. Literally, it got stuck in customs and Two weeks ago, this container of food got released from the Syrian by the Syrian authorities from customs. And right after it got released, the earthquake hit. And we, we're there and we're just praising God that not that the earthquake has hit, but that we have a 40 foot container of food that is ready to give out to all of these people who've been impacted by the earthquake. So this is how we see God moving. This is how we see God is blessing the ministry and helping us to bless others. Yeah. Amen. That's really good. Um, you know, at the end of the day, are there in-kind donations that people can make too? Are there things that you ship over or is that too costly? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, if, if people um, have, we're looking at larger quantities. So like I had somebody today come to me and say, you know, I've got 200 brand new t-shirts. Can you use them? And I said, absolutely. We're looking to source medical supplies. We're looking to support to source clothing and blankets, uh, things that we can get together, fill up a container and send it either to Ukraine or to Syria or wherever the next disaster strikes. So absolutely, if anybody watching this has any um, quantity of medical items or clothing, give us a call or send us an email and we'll let you know if we can use it and how to get it to us. Amen. That's awesome. Uh, really appreciate that. That's good stuff. So, Jeremy, um, we've interviewed over 3,000 people, and I love to ask the question, why do you do what you do? That's a really good question, and I think everybody should have a, a, an answer to that. You know, God called me to be a missionary uh, it's about, well, almost 25 years ago, um, and that that is often perceived as a calling that uh, is 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 the definition of how God calls you to serve calling us to move from England to America. You know, people say, well, really, was that a calling? And it, it was the same clear calling for us to move here as it was for me to be called to the mission field. And the reason why we do what we do is because our persecuted brothers and sisters are just not getting the help through national channels. And in many cases in countries like India and Pakistan, they are denied help just because they're Christians. So we feel that God is calling us to help our brothers and sisters. I feel a strong a calling to do what I'm doing now, as I did when I was called to South America as a missionary. And praise God, we're making a difference and we're helping thousands, hundreds of thousands of our brothers and sisters on an annual basis. That's yeah, that's and the ripple effects, they just go far and wide. It's it's hard to even God God and the Revelation 20, when we're before the throne and books are open and the other book, the Lamb books, the Lamb's Book of Life, I think God's a great accountant. So, you know, he keeps track of the ripple effects and things that go far and wide. Well, and it's a, it's a biblical mandate as well, Chuck, that, yeah. you know, God calls us to help our brothers and sisters. Uh, you know, Galatians 6.10, do good to all people, but especially the household of believers. Um, Isaiah talks about helping the widows and orphans. Um, so although, you know, you've got a biblical mandate for evangelism and for helping Christians spiritually, we've also got a biblical mandate to help them practically. And that's what we do. Amen. Body, soul and spirit. It's just exactly. not every verse in a Bible doesn't take care of everything. There's physical needs, emotional needs and spiritual needs. Right. That's it. That's absolutely that's right. Yeah, that's good. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us about Barnabas aid uh, before we close in prayer? I'll, I'll ask you to lead us to. I think if people can just pray that, you know, this aid that we're getting together, the, the, the needs are, are just growing on an annual basis. It used to be estimated that one in 10 Christians around the world was persecuted or suffered for their faith. I think the figure now is closer to one in eight. 
Um, so we shouldn't be surprised because scripture tells us that persecution is going to get worse and you just have to read through Revelation to, to get a clearer picture. But if people can pray that we would just continue to be effective and get the aid to the people that need it the most uh, and be uh, good stewards of what God has blessed us with. Amen. That's good. That's awesome. Um, well, God's on the move and, you know, the church is plan A. There really is no plan B. <laughs> He's always working through the church. I mean, we may miss opportunities and God may find someone else, but uh, I, I'd hate to think how many opportunities I miss. But we'll pray. God's God still in control. Steps. Yeah, God, God's on the throne. And just, you know, one bit of encouraging news. It, it's, it's often the case in these countries where the persecution is the worst. That's where the most people are coming to Christ. I mean, I yeah. talked about Ukraine. You could look at China. You can look at so many countries where North Korea, even where people are just um, persecuted, attacked, imprisoned, <clears throat> put in labor camps just because they own a Bible or because they're a Christian. And those are the countries where Christ is working powerfully. So we praise him that he's on the throne and he's still in control. Yeah. Amen. Because it gets a lot of attention and you're like, you believe what and you're enduring what for what you believe. And um, it just begs the question, you know, it's, uh, you know, this Jesus is real. You know, you, you know, there's nothing that even even martyrdom, the ultimate price, you know, that yeah. I've heard so many testimonies where, you know, they start lining up family members and they don't recant. And by the end of it, they're like, you know, they, they get saved. A whole lot of people get saved from it. So I call them RBIs, run batted in, you know, in baseball terms. But uh, nobody likes it. Uh, you know, we try to pray away the tough stuff, but certainly God uses all of it for sure. I could so, tell you so many stories, Chuck. I mean, imagine if if you've got kids, you know, if somebody breaks into your house and doesn't point a gun at your head, but points a gun at your child's head and says to the adult, if you don't recant your Christian faith and turn back to whatever religion it is, Islam or whatever, I'm going to shoot your kids. What would you do? I mean, how would we react in that situation? I pray that God would give me the strength to to stand firm. And that's what we see is our brothers and sisters standing firm, refusing to deny their faith and suffering horrendously because of it. But that's why we do what we do. Yeah. Amen. That's good. Well, listen, let's pray. Uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine being in that situation. I, even as you're saying, I'd probably look over and say, hey, I'll see you in heaven in a few minutes. You know, we'll be there mm. forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Yeah. You know? um, and if it's as great as the Bible says it is, who wants to be here any longer than we have to? So. Oh, it's going to be a million times better than we can even imagine, Chuck. That's one thing that we can hold on to. No doubt. No doubt. Well, if you can lead us in prayer, I'd love to close this. Yeah. Absolutely. Lord, there are so many so many Christians around the world who are persecuted, who are attacked, who are imprisoned, tortured, just so many situations that we can't even comprehend. And it's easy to, to turn our faces away and pretend it's not happening. But the one thing they, they want to know is that there are brothers and sisters in the West, in the US and in Europe and wherever else that are standing with them, that care about them, that want to help them. And I just pray that you would help us as wealthy Western Christians, relatively speaking, who uh, are blessed with so much. I pray that you would move us and enable us to help our brothers and sisters in faraway lands and to, to care about what happens to them and to pray for them. If we can just all pray for a country or situation, that will make such a difference. Please help us to do that, Lord, and help us to stand firm in our faith no matter what we undergo here in America. Just help us to stand firm to your, hold on to your truths and to stand firm and to make a stand for you. I pray these things in your holy name. Amen.
All right. So, you know, I hit the mute button before, so you probably weren't hearing any of that. So no. I'll continue <laughs> to pray. All right, Lord, we just thank you again for uh, second chances to talk and pray about what you're doing. I thank you for Jeremy and the board of directors and uh, the staff and the many donors who have brought in this ministry this far. Um, I thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy. We do lift up the persecuted church all around the world. We know you see everything and uh, show us how we can help support, encourage, um, and again, allow the gospel to be shared and disciples being made. Um, when you come back, we want more sheep than goats. We know when you do come back, you're going to separate the nations as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And we want more sheep than goats. So God, give us wisdom and discernment on how we can move forward and raise awareness to get more people involved. You are the Lord of the harvest, and we pray for laborers, because we know the harvest is ripe and laborers are few. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. If they haven't written it down, 703-288-1681, BarnabasAid.org. And uh, I'd love to close every uh, broadcast with a fist bump. You know where your camera is? You want a fist bump? There we go. Bam. Awesome. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, uh, until Thank our you. next interview on Overcomers TV Live, we hope you and your families are blessed. How would you like to partner with Overcomers TV? Become a ministry partner, spreading the good news about your ministry and Jesus Christ. We're selecting ministries for upcoming episodes of Answering the Call. We can also help you produce your own show. Partnering with us is easier than you think. Just visit our website, overcomerstv.live. Be an overcomer today with Overcomers TV.